Hi, this is Bart Gregg, Cookswell.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a deep dish pizza, Chicago style, in a Dutch oven. I'm using my test stand in the backyard. I'm using a large 12 inch seasoned Dutch oven, which is the ultimate non-stick. And I'll tell you this, this is an awesome recipe. I've done it in a cast iron skillet. You can make it over a campfire. How about that? Let's meet the oven. Look at that shiny bottom there. A little bit of Pam or something in there. Nothing's going to stick to that cast iron, the ultimate non-stick. Here's our ingredients. Three cups all-purpose white flour. Yeast, two teaspoons with a tablespoon of sugar to help it rise in lukewarm water, one and a half to one and three quarter cups. Whisk it well, set it aside, let that yeast become very active and begin fermenting in the water. This is a teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of Seiko's dried buttermilk powder, which is going to make one heck of a difference in the richness of the flavor of this dough. and half cup of cornmeal which makes a great little texture additive to it. Whisking all that together using a sort of looping action around the edge of the bowl get your dry ingredients very well combined first. Whisk the yeast and water mixture again add it to your dry ingredients Add a quarter cup or so of melted butter. Stir that in. I use a rubber spatula. I have a metal bowl in my camping gear and it works just fine too. Now that dough looks like it's going to need a little bit of extra flour. It's a little thin. If you're new to baking this kind of thing, this kind of dough, I highly recommend that you use tablespoon measures of water or flour depending on what you're going to add so that you know where you stand with your recipe and make notes. You'll get used to it and you'll be able to do it. Now that's pizza dough. That's pizza dough, but that's thin pizza dough. We're not going to toss this stuff. We're, deep dish pizza dough is a more of a bread like crust, so we're going to knead this adding a little more flour so you knead the bread till it feels right and it just at the end when it's good to go you poke a finger in it it springs right back this oven's been sitting in the sun so it's about 80 degrees put a little bit of lubricant in there not WD-40 put the, the ball of dough in there uh, if your oven is cold you might consider putting a coal or two around it on top of it underneath it just for a few minutes to warm it up and let the yeast do its thing. After the first rise of 15 minutes we're going to take it out and knead it lightly not too long not too many times put it back in the oven to rise again for about 30 minutes. Now that the dough has risen, we're going to use our hands, our bare hands, our fingers and heels of our palms, put a little flour on them to keep them from sticking to the dough, and use that to push and form the pie shell, as it were, the pie crust. You're just going to push down gently, easing things out. Yes, it seems like you're losing your uh, loft in there and what have you, and you are for a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to take care of that. Okay, so form the shell, push it up the sides a little bit, and then let's start adding some ingredients to this. I like to start by putting the cheese on the bottom. What happens is it seals the crust from the moisture from the stuff up above. In a Dutch oven, all your moisture is sealed in. In an oven in your kitchen, the moisture is actually evaporated out of there, so you have to take that into account after the cheese about a cup or cup and a half of marinara sauce I like Trader Joe's tomato and basil on top of that then we go with a pound of Italian seasoned sausage uh, take that skinless uh, and pre and we'll cook it 
crumble it, put it in there. Go ahead and press it down in there. It's not going to hurt. Next, we'll go with some quartered Canadian bacon. You can use whatever you want. It's your pizza. I just like the meaty stuff. After that, I found some turkey pepperoni, which is very low fat. I'm very careful with how much I use though because of the sodium content. Notice I'm not adding any salt or pepper to this. All the seasoning that you need is coming in the ingredients. After that some green pepper, maybe some onion if you wanted it. I didn't this time. And then some sliced black olives which add just a little touch of flavor to the top of it. And then we're going to finish it off with another 8 ounces or cup of shredded mozzarella. When you're baking in a Dutch oven, mostly the heat comes from the top down. You don't want too much heat underneath or it'll scorch the bottom, it'll scorch the crust. So I put 24 coals on top of a 12 inch oven. Look at that crust that's already forming nicely there but it's helping this to rise because I don't have too much heat yet on this. I'm going to add some more heat here in a moment. Let this go for about 15 minutes and add more heat. Alright, look at this. I've piled it on. Now I've got about three dozen. I've got about 36 coals on top. Look at the bottom down there. I've got something like 24 coals down there. And they're again spaced around the outside edge just to keep the sides of the of the uh, oven warm, and the heat is coming from the top and it's bringing it now. You'll see this thing forming. That's nicely done. The the uh, vegetables are cooking and the cheese is melting. Notice that I rotated the top quarter turn in one direction. I'm going to rotate the pot quarter turn or so. I should have turned it the other way, but either way, and you saw there was no coals underneath it. And I've stuffed the coals up underneath this thing, because I want to crisp the bottom. I like a little crisp crust under there. I'm only going to do this for like two minutes. I really pay attention to the timing on this. I only want two minutes, and give me a great crust. All right, time to eat. Let's take the coals out from underneath the oven, spread them around the outside, put the oven back on, take the coals off the lid, and what we're going to do is let this open the oven and let the pie sit for about two minutes, three minutes, and let some of the juices evaporate off. You can see the steam coming from it. It's going to be a little bit juicy in that pie, but boy, that is some good eating right there. Okay, now we've taken a piece of the pie out. You can see in the bottom that it's a little bit soupy. That's okay. Remember, in your regular oven in the kitchen, that would have evaporated. In a Dutch oven, you're going to have a little bit of soup. No big deal. Look at that pie right there. Loaded. Really good stuff. And check out that crust. It doesn't get any better than that. One final note here. As the cook, you're responsible for the condition of your Dutch oven when you're done. Look at this, very clean. All I did was wipe that thing out with a paper towel.